Hey, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a tech advocate with Cisco Learning and Certification. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 57 of DevNet Snack Minute. DevNet Snack Minute is your 10-minute all things DevNet, where we learn about coding, APIs, and just some cool stuff that we think you might like to know. And the cool thing that we're going to talk to you about today is console Terraform Sync with our guest, Quinn. Um, Quinn. Quinn's always on. Quinn is always on. Uh, thanks for joining us, Quinn. If you mind, you know, for those who don't know who Quinn is, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Yeah, yeah. So uh, my name is Quinn Snyder. I'm a developer advocate, uh, supposedly covering DC networking. But I think at this point, based on all of my snack minutes, it's either barbecue or Terraform. So uh, take your pick at this point. Yeah, but it's automating DC networking, right? Oh, no, this, this isn't even that. <laughs> Yeah, so you could say this is automating some DC networking. So what we're talking about, or, or what I want to show you today, is is really talking about uh, console Terraform Sync. And so this is a way that we can take uh, an application, and as it comes online into our automated fabric, when it registers with console for service discovery and service liveliness, we can actually use that information that's being fed to console to provide some automated routine or some kind of provisioning or process to that fabric using Terraform. And I, I teased a little bit about this on my first snack minute talking about Terraform in general. Uh, that was more of a, a stateless load balancer case, but this is more of an, an endpoint security and micro segmentation use case, where if the application comes online, it then gets put in the appropriate security group with the contracts and everything already applied through ACI. So Quinn, I know I know we cover Terraform extensively throughout the show. Um, so I'm hoping that our snackers are familiar with what Terraform is. Can you just give us a quick like two second what is console? Yeah so console it's it's evolved a little bit over time, but really, like I said, the two main use cases for it are service discovery and service liveliness. So when we think about uh, an application coming online to this uh, containerized world, how do we make sure that we have the right uh, fully qualified domain names, the right ingress being provided, not necessarily the, the machinations to make that traffic happen, but how do we even know where the container is or how do, how do we uh, uh, identify it? So when something comes online, it will register with console and provide that, that DNS-like uh, information for that service. The other uh, capability of console is that we can do some some service liveliness. So in this case, uh, the, in the demonstration that I'll do, we have this web server that's being run inside of these containerized applications. Well, we, we want to make sure we want to get a kind of a state of the network or the state of the application uh, based on those liveliness checks. So if the web server is not responding, we don't have some kind of, of TCP probes or something like that that's going on, then we can say that that service is now degraded or, or uh, in, in some cases not even functioning at all. And we can make sure that the application traffic isn't being steered towards those services that are not live. So for those familiar with the traditional uh, load balancer type example, where you have the liveliness probes and traffic being directed to those various uh, real servers behind the load balancer, kind of a similar idea. If those probes fail, then we no longer want to direct traffic towards that, that service. Okay, that makes sense. And then um, as part of this demonstration, this ties into the the uh, security groups for ACI. And so is, is console helping us um, sync that for is that helping us do our application registry or is there some other um, piece of data that's that's going to, to ACI through this service? Yeah, so it's a, it's a multi-step process, and I think the best thing to do here is is uh, I'll, I'll explain it as I as I walk through it. But really, what what's going on is the console as it, when it starts up will have no information other than hey, I'm here from a from a server perspective. As these applications will come online, they have been included some kind of liveliness check. So it's not completely zero touch. The application developers that are running these applications say, here's how I need this service to register to console. Um, mm. But they're already using the software, so they're familiar with that. There's no added burden on the application developers. Once that application comes online, it will register with console to say, hey, I'm here. Then it will go through its checks to say, uh, do we do we have that service that we need that's running? In this case, it'll be a web server. And then only when it's becoming uh, uh, when that web server is alive and it's becoming active, will that then pass the information to to Terraform. Um, the, the Terraform that, that is being applied here is, is fairly simple. Um, there's some, some pre-built 
uh, HCL that it will pull from, from, from another repository that then just says, using the information that's being passed from this middleware binary, this console Terraform sync binary that's being received from console, fill that action into variables inside of this HCL and then send it along to the fabric that you've defined as part of the configuration. Was, <clears throat> were you planning on showing us what that HCL looked like, just out of curiosity, or is that how to go for this demo? Uh, so I, I can show it. Um, I want to get through the demo just so you can see how the whole pieces work, and then we can actually dive into the into the, the HCL Quinn. itself. Uh, I, know, I know, I know, it's a kill, but there's, there's a lot going on, and I don't, I don't want to miss anything. So, uh, if you guys can see my screen right now, this is the repository that that has been set up currently. Um, right now, this is just the GitHub repository. I do have a learning lab that is available, or will be available, I should say. It's going through the review process, and so we got, dive into a lot of the the deeper components of the HCL in the in that learning lab. Uh, but if we have time, I can get to it today. I've really set this up so it's 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 almost. It, it's as simple as possible to get started. So there's a lot of wrapper scripts that I've built in here, and even the setup is fairly fairly quick. Uh, if we just bash, and I've already done this setup piece, but that one script will do a lot of setup for you. And in this top uh, terminal window, I've done a lot of those pieces. So all it's doing is it will, as I scroll up through all of this stuff, um, it will download the appropriate console version. Oh, and I've missed that. It'll build the container. Uh, pull down all of the different parts and pieces. It will install the correct binary for both Terraform and for the console Terraform sync piece. And then uh, let's see, console container, it'll build the application container and pull down CTS and Terraform, as well as cloning all the code. So it's all ready to go here. The other piece that is as part of this is some setup. So some basic pieces have to be uh, ready for us before we can even do this. I've created an application profile uh, and a tenant and a VRF behind uh, the, the fabric. So we've kind of pre-scaffolded pre our environment and we can see that that uh, tenant named console is already built here inside of the fabric. I'll show, I'll get to the piece so you guys can see some of the action here. It's gonna be under application profiles. And we have this application profile already set up. And right now there is no endpoint security groups that are that are being configured. So what I'm gonna do first is do, uh, I'm gonna set up the uh, console serve start. So this is going to start a container that, that is going to, to build the console server itself. So that's going to be uh, listening. And if we go to the console UI, we can now see that console is up and functioning. It will take a second to kind of get all the services up. We can see we only have one service started at this point. So this means that the, it knows that the console server itself is up and functioning, but we don't have anything else behind it. So what I'm going to do now, is just to, to demonstrate this, is app01 start. This is going to start an application container. That application container is really just running Nginx and the console um, uh, binary to, to let it register to the console server. You can see that we now have this app that is uh, showed up as a service. So that application co uh, container has has uh, come online. It's registered to console, which is where we see this node check passing, but the service checks are failing. So something is going on behind the scenes. Now in this bottom piece, I want to do a couple of things here and we'll do the uh, console Terraform so this will start the console Terraform sync binary. This is going to download a bunch of the modules that have been created based on the configuration. And we have all of this, this uh, up and functional, and it's going to post all those that information to uh, standard out. So right now we can see that we're ready to go. We're listening. Uh, we have the... Um, we're waiting for all of the the, the code. It's doing the, the checks between console, but you can see that we have nothing going on uh, because there's nothing. Uh, the the service itself is down inside of seat of uh, the the container. So now we're we're ready to go. And just so there's nothing to leave, there is no ESG that's been created as of yet. So now the fun part. Uh, in this case, I'm going to start the nginx service inside of that container because right now it's stopped. So I'm just going to drop into the container itself and do service nginx start. This will now start that service, and we can see that we have that worker process being built. All of a sudden, we see these service checks have now moved to passing. So that's that application container has now told console, 
I am now alive. My service is functioning. I can be handling traffic. We saw a bunch of that information being dropped into the, the console Terraform sync binary saying, hey, this app is now up. We're going to provide this, this um, uh, configuration. We're going to pass it along to ACI. Now here, we can see that we now have this endpoint security group called CTS app service, which is what has been created as part of that definition. If we get dive deeper into it, we have this IP subnet selector for this 172.17.03, which is that container that we have just instantiated. So it's seeing that we have this app01 instance on this console node 01 container that I've created. Um, control P, Q. So is it, th let me understand this straight. Did, did console say I got an, a new container up, went to ACI and said, hey, I need an IP address to assign it and then assign it to the app? No, no, no. The, the the IP address is part of the Docker networking stack. So let me get into, if we go back into that container here, and if I do an IP adder, we can see that that 172.0.3 is that application container uh, running. Now, normally this would be run in some, you know, if we're doing this outside of that, that would be a public IP address or something inside of your network, but it's pulling that IP address out of the container and then registering it to uh, ACI yeah. automatically. So all of this information is just being passed along from that application. So in a in a production type environment, the console service would be running consistently, consistently, and the the sync service would be running consistently. So that if we ever deployed another container, another service, um, that registration process would happen automatically. Am I understanding that correctly? Absolutely, and and we can run this with another container, so you can see. Um, uh, let's see here, app 02 start. We can see it on this side. So in this case, we're going to start the app 02 container and it's going to be running. We can see that we have some configurations being synced between the two, but we're not seeing that new IP subnet selector. So if I drop into the container itself, because you, ha you haven't started the service in that container yet. Correct. Yeah. So if we go back here, okay. just, to, just to show you that we have the new instance called app 02, but that service check is failing. So we haven't started that service yet, but if we go here and start, and we can do a service nginx status just to, to show that there's nothing going on behind there, that service isn't running. But if we go and start it, we now have console Terraform Sync doing its thing, and we should see a new IP subnet selector right there for app 02 node. And this is so essentially- Terraform handling all of that for us on the back end. Correct. It's part so of that sync to, process. Yeah. Yeah, if we want it to stop, just so you can see that it doesn't just work in one direction, if we stop the Nginx service, we can now see that that IP subnet selector has, has moved back and we can see that App02 is indeed failing again. So this is providing the whole elasticity as these new apps are coming online, we're going to make sure that we have a consistent security policy that is applied to them because of that that movement between um, uh, the registration in console and just filling in those variables from that from the Terraform um, the back end Terraform code. I gotta say, I love how how all of the hashy products play nicely together because <laughs> I've seen I've seen the use case where something similar to what <laughs> Quinn has built here, where they've added vault on top of this and into the mix so when your application spins up it goes out to vault pulls whatever security and keys and whatever it needs and comes back and then it mm. registers with console you love vault <laughs> i do, I do. <laughs> it's um uh Quinn, this is this is really cool and i see uh, the applicability here because from an ops perspective you've provided all of the setup uh for the the whole sync process for console for the terraform uh, usage and also from an application developer perspective, they only have to worry about the things that they would have to worry about for tying into console. They don't have to worry about the ACI portion of this at all. So that's really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So okay. the application, um, the app, and I'll actually I'll go back here and I'll show you the, the the start here for the container. So. Uh, Granted, we're just we're running these inside a Docker container so we can run this out of the sandbox. But all we're we're doing here is is the same stuff that people would would do if they're developing that console um, 
sync or the, the, the console hook or that service liveliness, service discovery inside of their application. We're binding it to an interface, we're giving it a name, we're providing some configuration to say, here's where we're going to be dropping this inside of, of console. So we have this service named app, uh, we have an ID called app01, that's that app01 container. And then this chip, the check is just doing a, a curl on, on port 80 uh, for that, that local host system. So that's all that check is doing, but that's that's very rudimentary. If, if there was something, maybe we need to have some reachability to one or more backend services, maybe some multiple databases. Uh, if the if it's a middleware application that needs a web front end, we can have all of those services being checked so that if any one of those services is failing uh, or any one of those checks failing, then the service is no longer uh, running and we can remove it from, from that, that pool of services. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, from a security perspective, we want to make sure that anything coming online has the appropriate uh, security policy uh, to prevent, you know, ending up with uh, uh, your corporate name in the news uh, for some security breach somewhere <laughs> along the line. <laughs> no one wants that. Um, Quinn, unfortunately, that's all the time we have uh, for this week. Thank you for joining us two weeks in a row uh, with your awesome demos of automating your infrastructure to support application development. That's super exciting. Um, and uh, for everyone uh, who's new to Snack Minutes, uh, I, I've always wanted to say this, smash that subscribe button. <laughs> That'll be the last time I say that from now on. I'll just say <laughs> click that subscribe button. Uh, but thank you guys for joining us for yet another episode of DevNet Snack Minute. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Snackers. 